And today is day 41. We'll continue from the course we started on day 40, which is DAX functions in Power BI. And in today's live stream, in today's learning journey or today's lesson, we are going to learn introduce to variables that allows you to write efficient DAX functions. So without further ado, let's jump back to learning and welcome to day 41. Methods to creating to create DAX measures. Welcome back. Now that you are familiar with using DAX for calculated columns, let's look at using DAX for measures. The first concept we need to understand is implicit versus explicit measures. Implicit measures are automatically created by Power BI and come directly from the database. An example would be if we drag sales to values of a table. Power BI will automatically sum it. Using a drop-down menu, we can define the aggregation, sum, minimum, average, and so forth. Explicit measures is the name for explicitly written measures. An example would be if we calculate total sales as the sum of all sales. Because of their flexibility, explicit measures are preferred. Let's understand why. First of all, it reduces confusion. If we see sales on a report plane, we don't understand what it means exactly. It could be the sum, the average, or something else. Secondly, they are reusable. We can refer to the total sales formula and other measures, such as a calculation for total sales east. Explicit measures can be given a custom name to explain its functionality. Being able to create specific functions for your needs reduces errors and will make maintenance of complex models more sustainable. You'll try this out during the exercises. Using explicit measures in Power BI can be very powerful, but it's important to do so in an organized and structured manner. The first step is to keep DAX measures grouped together in a separate table. That is because measures are free to move to any